Hi folks, here we are. We're in deep learning and big data applications analytics, and it's actually more like AI this particular section. Though, as always, AI is mainly deep learning, so there's a lot of deep learning there. Although this is banking. Bank. The amazing thing about banking is this: how much AI and startups there are in banking. I didn't really realize that till I started studying the. the <laughs> Right, <clears throat> and you could view banking as finance, um, but um, because there's all sorts of activities, say in the investment area, they a startup just reduced the cost of buying stocks to zero, and everybody has matched that. At least uh, the other other big companies have. So these startups are having big impact everywhere, even in trivial areas by changing the norm. Other areas by introducing new capabilities. And the problem is the older institutions are not prepared to fight because they don't have the right skills. That's why you have startups. That is, if you like, the success of the American approach, which is to challenge the, the bureaucracy with new startups. And the trouble about the bureaucracy, the established thing is often they just cannot compete. They have to protect, they have too much old stuff to protect. And they don't have the right skills. So here we go. Let's see what happens to how many banks will still be around 10 years from now. All right, so the banking is front, middle, and back. Here is the front. And um, we have chatbots. We saw those before in retail. Biometrics. Well, we know biometrics is, is useful not only in banking, but in all secure things like travel. Um, we know that AI can personalize things. So that um, give you personalized um, insight into your the right way to manage your money and things. Almost certainly AI is better than the not terrible. I mean, the, a lot of the people that are now doing that by hand. All right, here we have a summary from Business Insider of the three areas with some value in cost savings. Totaling around uh, $450 billion. And um, we have um, front office, we just talked about biometrics and personalized insights, um, chatbots and things. Middle office, money laundering. Um, know your customer, analyze in detail what is going on in his accounts. And then we have back offices actually making decisions about who to give credit and things like that. So that's a pretty important area. Making smart contracts and loans and things like that. The one thing to realize is, and we'll have a little chart later, the large size of the home mortgage loan industry is enormous. All right, banking as a service. Well, we have a platform as a service, and software as a service, and network as a service, and computing as a service. How about banking as a service? And here we have the end user, and here we have um, clients and providers, and here are various startups running around. I haven't heard of any of them. Uh, but uh, there are huge, another thing, but there are a number of people who have started have startups in these areas, and the amount of money that's gone into them is staggering. All right, uh, do banking as a service, you better have, remember what service means, you have messaging. And you put messages from point A to point B. Well, that's very important in banking, because money is all over the world, and it's, it's traveling around at very high speed, and it's being somewhat sometimes illegally traveling around at high speed. So the only way it can travel around at high speed is if you have an API which you understand. So these APIs are very important. And um, the way these startups work is by establishing APIs and you FinTech are the startups, financial technology, and these APIs which Allow you to access customer information, allow the fintech to add huge value. Well, hopefully, huge value. Value, at least. Let's say they try to add value. Okay, let's go. All right, middle office. We mentioned, but we pointed out that fraud was an important middle office thing, which is um, fraud losses are 48 per billion per annum. Uh, one thing I realize is, well, that sounds a big number, but if you look at the total size of banking, is maybe. I don't know what it is. Percents, not not 100%, maybe 1% or 2%. I don't know. 
um, and it's increasing. Um, from 48 billion in 2023, they projected that that's an increase from 22 billion today. And of course, we already machine learning is used to identify fraud, and, and it's sort of pretty trivial. They say if I buy a, a teddy bear in China and um, Bloomington at the same time, that's suspicious. It's actually not suspicious, it just means I share the car with my spouse or my child. Um, but that's the type of thing they check. Um, and I'm always getting phone calls. And so they could either actually reduce the number of phone calls I get by not being so, by flagging things which are obviously okay. Well, plausibly okay. And there's this nice word of a neo bank, which are presumably the new banks, uh, which are 100% digital. They don't have people. I'm actually pretty surprised the number of branch offices banks still have. They are going down. Uh, I don't know why I've got a plot of that, but they're going down. But they're not going down as fast as I would have guessed. But they're certainly not going to go up, although some people are claiming to add banks because it's actually, I find it, I don't, I hardly ever go to a real bank except to cash checks. And that could be done by a more efficient fashion than me running over to the bank and sticking it in uh, some slot. All right. Here's a pretty useful report, CB Insights. We'll have a little bit from that in the coming on. And here's this business intelligence uh, report. Okay, this is CB Insights, which is just on the line. And um, 2018, actually, remember the numbers in health? There were eight. In the case of banking, it's 40 billion. 40 billion, up 15%. So this somehow. I, this surprises me that fintech is much bigger than health tech, much bigger. Really, in, I guess I it's because everybody, well, no, because everybody gets ill, maybe not everybody. Maybe 10% of the people get ill and 100% of the people do banking. So that's why banking is bigger. I don't know, it's amazing. This is staggering to me how, much, how large these numbers are. Um, and they're pointing out that they're moving to focusing on winners. This fintech revolution has been going on now for some time. They're the so-called unicorns. These are the giants in the field. They actually they don't actually even have to have horns, except they're, they're stabbing into the established uh, establishment and beating them up. And we have new five new unicorns. That's pretty exciting. And um, there were mega. I mean these. New companies are getting investments of billions of dollars. Robin Hood was the one that decreased the cost of uh, buying stocks to zero. So this is, these venture capitalists give money to Robin Hood. Robin Hood reduces the price of, because of that, doesn't have to charge for investments, and then everybody else can't, has to reduce the price of investments. So that's interesting uh, um, circle. All right, we have these mega rounds. And they don't think there's going to be a lot of IPOs. And a lot of these are in China. The biggest investment, I think, was in China. Um, although they claim the US is $12 billion, new annual high. Europe had a small fallback, we had $4 billion. And <clears throat> remember, look at Asia, which is mainly China, $23 billion. South America plugging in there. So it's all over the world, these fintechs are surging because they are localized. You know, bank, I don't use a South American bank, and South America probably would prefer to use their own bank. All right, so here is a sort of a, a survey of whatever's in this CB Insights report, which we're only gonna look at a tiny fraction. We have all these things, regulation technology, personal finance, payments and billings, insurance, capital markets, wealth management. Wish we had that. Money transfer, that's universal. And that's why we need the APIs. Anything which mentions the word transfer has to have an API, does it not? I told you, mortgage and real estate are enormous businesses. Um, so anyway, all these things are impacted by FinTech, financial technology. Okay, here we have the, this plot I pointed out that is $40 billion. And here's the number of deals, 1,707 deals in 2018, staggering. And here we are, here 2014, we had 8 billion, 
an 885 deal. So we've gone up a factor of almost uh, four and a half in size to 2018 in value, and uh, twice in the number of um, the number of investments. <clears throat> Still, these numbers are amazing to me. Here we have a, a decomposition from Business Insider by um, by um, amount. Uh, it's actually pointing out that at least in 2019, it's only got 15 billion for the first half of the year. So maybe it will go down from this peak in 2018. I, th I think this field is pretty mature. This is not a field exploding. Although presumably we will see some huge impact of this financial technology. I think banks are going to be in trouble. You can't have all this money going into producing rivals for banks. It's sort of funny because most of these <coughs> people financing it are probably banks themselves. Here we have China and India, and uh, we have this big investment in China in 2018. This is by quarter, and you can see there's a big reduction in China. Maybe that's the tariff wars are decreasing the volume. India has been plugging away at a much lower value than China. This is actually quite striking how much China's gone down in 2019. Now, what do we have here? Latin America, I told you, Latin America is um, pretty active still, and we can see a big peak in 2019. Of course, these things go uh, have a uh, lumpy, because uh, they're dependent on um, particular companies at particular stages. And some of these companies are getting billion dollar investments in them. It used to be that you got a few million dollars a startup. And now, but now you have these later rounds, which are billions. Um, here we have a, a sort of plot of the 39 unicorns valued in, which have a valuation of more than a billion dollars. That's their definition of a unicorn. A billion dollars is a unicorn. That's a pretty interesting definition of a unicorn. It used to be they had a horn, but never mind. And here they are, they're all these amazing names. I mean, this is pretty amazing. I mean, how many of these have you heard of? Not so many. Toast. Stripe, um, Credit Karma, Rife, mentioned Robin Hood before. China, a $38 billion valuation for this one here, LU.com with some Chinese symbols in front of it. Nothing else near that. Um, I think this is a branch of one of the big e-commerce companies, or maybe internet providing companies. It's not a separate, really a separate company. All right, real estate, I told you, what's important is how big real estate is. And you have both commercial real estate and residential real estate. I wouldn't want to be in the real estate business with retail mouths disappearing and uh, people choosing new words of uh, ways of living. I'm not so certain this is a great business. But anyway, there's still only the dollar value is enormous. And we have a lot of people in the different parts of it. Look at, the, look at all these companies. Title, agent tools, real estate agent tools, mortgage and lending, listing, property management, investment. These are all parts of the real estate industry. And technology is, there are just new startups invading all parts of this. Amazing. That's what I was amazed by this banking survey. This points out about how the mortgage debt dwarfs everything. Mortgage debt, $9 trillion. Student loans, 1.4. Auto loans, a bit less than 1.25. <coughs> Credit card, 850 billion. It's a factor of 10 below the mortgage rate. So, I mean, that's sort of an amazing number. So, obviously, if there's a big debt, which is all being repaid with interest, there's probably money to be made on the edge. Um, here we have the top 11 fintech deals. I told you this is um, this Ant company. That was the one which had LU. No, Ant company is not the LU.com. So we have two Chinese ones, Ant and LU.com. Um, I, I made a mistake when telling you uh, um, this one. It must be a subset of Alibaba because that's Alipay. As, as a subsidiary. So this is a spin-off from Alibaba. And this is the one that's got the, uh, the largest, but well, it has 19 billion in, in funding 
and a $150 billion valuation, which I think disagreed with some earlier number we had. But anyway, it's pretty staggering. And they just got a $14 billion deal. LU.com only got 1.35. Well, that's tough luck, isn't it? Um, here's the um, six, which were US. And uh, I say here we have Robin Hood again. It's up there with just a mere third of a billion. These are all around a third of a billion. So it's sort of interesting that 300 million seems to be a, a unit for the investment you do in this in this area. So People must really believe there's huge amounts of money in this area to be able to put so much into these companies. Um, so here's a, just an amusing example, counting coins with robots. And uh, so the, you can obviously imagine, that's just image processing. So, and uh, robotic manipulation. So I, I would think you can count coins very reliably with robots. So the, I don't know how much that's worth, but it's a good solid application of AI. You've got the image processing to identify the coins and to control the robot, and you have basic robot manipulation. So there we are, folks, in the banking, and amazing that so much is going on, and it's all not very little publicity, because it's not so exciting as some of the other startups, like self-driving cars and things, and drones and stuff. Thank you.